If you are a professional artist, you know that you need traffic. You need people going to your website, going to your social media and seeing you all over the place, all the time. And the more people will see you, the better will be your chances to sell your art and be contracted by big names. But how can you have your name out there? Well, the best way to do that is with media. Most of the people think that they need a public relations to achieve this media. This is not true. And if you watch this video till the end, I will give you 10 things that you need to have to achieve your goals within media. Appearing in TV, giving interviews, going to the radio, or even making collaborations online. If you want to know better, come with me. Hi, I'm Sira. I was born in an artistic family and as an agent, manager, and producer, I've worked for many years selling artists from all around the world. Today, I want to help you to become a full-time artist. Hello, I am Suira and I'm here to help you to become a full-time artist. You also want to appear in the media, right? Yeah, it's really important for an artist to appear in TV, be listened on the radio, go to podcasts and make collaborations with other influencers in the market. But how can you get there? How can you appear in a TV show? How can you get that interview that you want? Well, most of people go to public relationships agents. They go there, explain what they do, pay a fee, and wait for these people to bring the contracts or the contacts to them to make the deals. However, if you don't have this money and if you don't have those connections, this is not a problem. I will give you here 10 tips, then things that you need to do to achieve exactly the same thing that a public relations agent would do for you. My first tip can be pretty simple, but it's really hard for artists to do that. Know exactly who you are and what you do. And when I say that, it's not for you to write a newspaper or a hundred pages book about who you are and what you do. But in simple words, in short sentences, try to explain what you're all about. Try to explain your art, your inspirations, your goals with that. So it may require a self-assessment, it may require a lot of writing. Take out most of the things instead of trying to put in. Try to make it simple, try to make it easy so people can read this and understand exactly who you are and what you do. My second tip is know exactly who your audience is. It means you need to know exactly the person who will connect with the art that you are putting out there. And if you don't know who your right buyers are, please click here on the card that I will direct you to a full video about that. My point here is to say that if you don't know exactly who your audience is, it's really hard for you to go to the right media. We know that each channel has a different audience, each podcast has a different audience, each TV channel has a different audience. So when you are talking with people from these different places, you need to know that your audience matches with their audience. And if you don't know exactly who your audience is, it's really possible that or you cannot pitch your work good enough to convince the media to make the interview or to bring you to a show or invite you to a podcast. Or you can maybe think these people to understand that actually you are not working with the same crowds and they will only interview you, invite you, or publish your work if both of you guys are talking to the same people. We need to understand that a media, and any type of media when I say this, it can be a channel on TV, a podcast, a radio, or any other thing that you can imagine, they want to serve their audience, showing things that are relevant for them. And in order to do that, they invite guests. You, you are Beyonce. Thank and you. If you want to be one of these guests 
that they are inviting. You need to show them that your product serves the same audience that they serve. So when they have you and the show and make an interview with you, they know that everything that you're saying is relevant to their audience. My third tip, create a media kit. And what is a media kit? Some people call it media kit, some people call it press kit. They are all the same. A media kit is a very simple document with one page, sometimes with less than one page, with everything that people need to know about you. This media kit needs to show your face in a picture, you working in a second picture, the main contacts that you have, like your email, your website, your social media that you use most, in a brief, really brief explanation about who you are and what you do. People need to go through this in a very simple way, in a very fast way. And you're going to understand now, in my tip number four, I would say make things simple. And the simpler you make your presentation, your introduction, the better it will be received on the other side. Imagine that people that is working with Medium, they have lots of things to do. They have lots of deadlines, they have lots of emails getting in all the time. If you send an email with a hundred pages document, no one will read, no one have time to do that. It will be really hard for this person to really understand who you are and what you do without the full reading. So what people do, in general, or they will read just the beginning, or they will completely ignore your email. And we don't want any of those things. Keep your presentation short and simple. Use simple words and direct your readers, in this case, the media agents, exactly why you are important. Show them why you are important. Show them why you do things that are different from all the other artists around. And the best way for you to do that, and my tip number five, highlighting your achievements. Choose from three to five, up to five, great achievements that you have in your artistic career. Maybe you received some award, maybe you had an interesting participation in an event, maybe you have an interesting interview in another medium, or maybe you are starting right now and the best thing that you have are your numbers on social media, or the different type of work that you have that no one else has. Choose your highlights, choose what makes you different. And know that people from media will just take your words to introduce you. No one will be creating text to introduce you. No one will be reading this 100 pages to highlight what is the three or four main achievements that you ever had. It's your job to do that. And it's your job to make it simple, easy and straightforward. Tip number six is know the rule of the three. And what's the role of the trick? It's really hard for us to memorize things. It's really normal that we forget things over time. I imagine that you already saw this. If you go to a place and someone starts to list several things for you, you will remind the first one, maybe you remind the second one. When you get to the third one, it's starting to get complicated. On the fourth, you were not really paying attention. On the fifth, you decided that you have most important things to do. And the sixth, you will go through all your grocery lists and all your to-do lists. And this part, you are already not paying attention. The person can go listing to the 10th, the 15th or whatever number it is. By this point, you already forget the first, second and the third that you have in your mind. So when you are going to talk to people and you want to people to pay attention to what you're saying, try to list what is the three most important things. If you list 10, people will not connect to what you're saying. But if you list three, people will remember. People will just remember more than three 
if it, it is in, in a video like this, as I'm making for you, it is written in a book or in something that people can rewinding or reading back or have access again. If you were sending a document, if you were sending an email, it's really possible that the media will read this once to determine if you go to the second step or if they will just ignore you. If you start to list lots of things that you do, they will ignore you. So try to always fix in three things if it's possible. You need to highlight your work, choose three. You need to highlight your achievements, choose three. You need to describe your values, choose three. So if you always choose three things to talk about, people will always remember, connect with them, and your chances are higher to appear in the media. This is also something that's really useful if you are looking for a job. If you are looking for a job, it's exactly the same strategy. You go in there and you're going to show your CV and try to highlight just three things that are really important in your background. Not everything. My tip number seven is know exactly who will read your email. Try to investigate who is this person. For example, let's say that you want to appear in the post. They have a part of their website written press. You go there and see that you can send your idea of material for them. They will analyze and they will get back to you. You will see that most of the areas of this journal have specific people working on this. So if you go to cinema, you see that there are some names of the journalists that appear there. If you go to international, you have others. If you go to art, maybe you have others. Try to find where your content would be relevant to this journal, to this TV channel, to this show. And try to see who is the person who will possibly write your material, or that will possibly interview you in a podcast, or that will possibly hire you to a collaboration on the internet. When you find this person, try to be a detective. With this genetic research and my advanced technology... But Carmen... Do it! Do this person has a LinkedIn, a Facebook page, a Facebook profile, Instagram? Maybe this person appear in other newspaper, in other podcasts, in other radio station. Read everything that you can about this person. And when you are writing your pitch to send to this place, write this for this person. So let's say that you are going to show your paintings to um online platform. You went there and you see that the person who writes most of them, it's a woman in the middle age that have two children. Imagine what will be the needs of this person. And when you write your pitch, try to highlight the things that you imagine that this person will value the most. Every time that you send your material to the media, you should re write your presentation. You need to write this for your audience. In this case, the media that will receive this pitch from you. Pitch is how we call when you send this material for media and you are trying to make them buy this story, buy this idea and invite you to participate on this show or this program or this interview or whatever you want to participate in. With this, we get in my tip number eight, write to your audience. Don't write it to yourself. Try to imagine what will make this audience, in this case, the agent of the media or the reporter or the influencer or whatever the person that will receive your email, try to understand how this person will read it. Most of the times this person don't have time, so try to make it simple and short. Most of the time this person has lots of other emails trying to get the same space that you are trying to get. So make easy for them to choose you. That's why I said highlight your achievements. Also, try to give them exactly the material they will need. 
probably they will need a picture of you to post on social media to say that you're going to participate on this show, a brief introduction about your work, a short video if it's for TV showing what you do. Uh, a small, and when I say small, it's really a small presentation of why your work is different from the others. If you can do all of this in a simple way that make their work simple and their work easier, it's really possible that they get to you again. And also try to put the main thing in the beginning of your email. I know, I sometimes we start to, hello, how are you? I hope this email finds you well. I saw you doing this and I saw you doing that. And it takes a while for us to get on the point. When you're writing for this type of things, do the opposite. It start with, hi, hello, or whatever. I want to participate in this because of that. And I will be a good selection because I have this, this, and this, three things. Attach it, I have my press kit and give them something to do after. And that's it. Try not to be too complex. Artists sometimes have this tendency of using complicated words to justify the art that they do. Or they try to make this very hard to understand statements that they imagine that will introduce better their artwork. Actually, the best way for you to do that is with last words and straight to the point. My tip number nine is say exactly what the person needs to do after reading the email. So the first point of contact that you have with this person will be by email. You are going to send them an email, they will receive this email and now how they talk to you. Give them how they can talk to you back. So in the end of your email, give all your contacts. Say what's your website, email, main social media. Say something like, for more information, you can access my press kit here attached and something like that. So the people know that they will read your email and now what they do, they will read your press kit and now they know where they can connect with you again. Maybe they want to talk to you by the phone, send you an email, check your social media website to know if you are the best choice. So make this work simple and easy for them to do. And my tip number 10 is never forget to follow up. It's not because you send your material once that people really read your email. Most of the people who work in the media will not read your email most of the times. They have lots of emails getting to them all the time. What normally they do is that they will read the easiest ones or the ones that are connected with something that they are working at the time and they will make a selection of these ones. The ones that they like but it's not exactly the timing for that or they don't have maybe other artists to put with you in this program or they don't know exactly how to approach this uh, idea that you have right now, they will take and put on the drawer. We say in the drawer, of course, it's not the drawer nowadays, but this is the term that we used to say before when the reporters or the journalists really had everything in paper. But the idea that if you are in the drawer, you can be the next pick. They can choose you for something in the future. So in one day that they have nothing to write about, they open the drawer, drawer and they will look for the best ideas that they can produce with the material that are there. However, if you are always sending another email, making your follow-up, asking if people received your email properly and trying to send again and try to make even easier the next email or the third email, the fourth email, you will see that at some point they will need to read what you're sending. Because, well, if you send once, you have one opportunity. If you send twice, you have two opportunities. If you send 10 times, eventually the person will open to see at least what is this about. And if you follow all the tips that I said to you, this person will see how easy it is to understand what you do, put your achievements in the screen to work with you 
in general. And we like easy things, right? You will have a lot of advantage if you do that. So if you're an artist and you are looking for appearing in the medium or making collaborations in the internet, I hope that you could get the best of this video because these 10 tips that I put right here seem to be super simple, but actually most of the artists don't do. I worked as a curator for a long time and when I was selecting bands for the festival, I would go exactly like a media person. I will go to the people or to the bands or to the musicians that make my work easier. I want to read the type of material that is in one page, not a hundred. I want people that know exactly who they are, what they do, why they are different and who they serve. And I want people who knows what I do and what festival I am representing. Because if these people want to pitch to my festival, they need to know which festival is this. That's the first step. It's like you are looking for a job and you are just sending your curriculum for everyone. Oh, I can be a CFO in this company or I can work for McDonald's. Well, there are two completely different things. Maybe you have skills for one, maybe you have skills for another. It's not everything that will fit in your goals or in your skills. In the same way, as an artist, you need to know exactly who you should be pitching. Who is the media that you want to be appearing at? Some media will help you to get more views. Some medias will help you to have better traffic. Some medias will help you to be more popular. But if your work talks with this audience and this media talks with this audience, it makes no difference for you to participate in this media because they are not talking to your audience. They will show you for people who are not interested in what you do. People who have no connection whatsoever with what you do. And if these are not the right buyers, you are losing your time looking for appearing in this medium. Don't lose your time. Look for people who can help you to maximize the work that you're doing right now. So look for people who serve the same audience that you do. I hope you liked today's video. See you next week. I need to tell you that I have a full masterclass for free. How can you take the leap and become the artist that you want to become? It's not a sales pitch. In this masterclass, I will help you with a real training that will give you the step by step. So if you want to check this, go here in this website and you watch a two hour class totally for free so you can start to be a full-time artist right now. Thank you so much for keeping making art.